The rut is a complete 180 from hunting the early or the late season. Bucks are chasing does, they're making scrapes, they're making rubs, you're seeing all this deer sign. Things have just kicked into the next gear. The rut is rocking. Wait till bucks have lost their mind in a fog of lust. I'm Mark Kaiser and you're watching Deer and Deer Hunting TV. This is where it all begins. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. I always look forward to the whitetail rut. And as a whitetail hunter, I try to map out where I want to be at the peak of the rut. And where is that location? Well, of course, it's the sunflower state of Kansas. Kansas has Big white tails. Look at the Boone and Crockett book and Pope and Young listings. They're everywhere. Every year, Kansas is just blowing up the pages. Giant non typicals and typicals both. Kansas really is a utopia for white tailed deer. It's a destination for those hunters who want to have a chance at shooting that buck of a lifetime. They grow huge bucks in Kansas. And where are they coming from? Well, that's the good thing about Kansas, all over the state, northeast, southeast, west, you can get a big whitetail buck almost anywhere in any zip code in Kansas. So where does my truck head to when I want to chase one of those big Kansas whitetails? To my friend, Greg Gilman's place in northeast Kansas. Now, Greg and I have been hunting together for 10 years or more. We met at elk camp, but every year we have a reunion. Sometimes he uh, ends up in my Wyoming backyard chasing elk, but most of the time we're down in Kansas. Greg is a wildlife property specialist for Clubhouse Realty. He focuses on some of the best properties in his area, and he grew up here, so he knows how to pick out a property that has everything, refuge, food, water, and the ability to take just a bare property and turn it into a whitetail wonderland. But Mark and I have been friends for, I guess, a little over a decade now. I met him at an elk camp and we kind of hit it off. So he's been hunting here and he, he knows the property pretty well. And we've kind of honed into a certain area where we like to start hunting every year. It's a, it's a great rut funnel point. The habitat is incredible. I mean, look at the Kansas landscape. You've got all these honey holes for bucks to grow up in. You've got woodlots, you've got grasslands, you've got old homesteads. I mean, these are all adjacent to these huge agricultural crops where they get all the nutrition they need to grow large antlers. Kansas, it's a great destination for big bucks. Deer and deer hunting is brought to you by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ arrows and by 10 Point Crossbow Technologies. There is no substitute. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Redneck Blinds. I've hunted Kansas during the early muzzleloader season. Uh, during the post rut season and during the rut. And I can tell you that all of those time frames, they provide a lot of thrill and they can provide a lot of challenge. Now knowing Greg for this many years, I've had the experience to come here 
in every different season. I've hunted the early pre-rut, I've hunted the peak of the rut, I've even been here on late season bow hunts and gun hunts. I've seen it all here. Every year, Kansas is just blowing up the pages. For the past few years, I've been focusing all my Kansas efforts on bow hunts. I love bringing my Matthews down here and giving it a go. Kansas is just made for bow hunting whitetails. You know, I'm very particular on who I take hunting on my personal properties. Mark's really the only one that hunts with me. This piece of property I got here, I bought around 10 years ago. Uh, you know, the, the main reason I bought it because it had all the criteria for shooting a big whitetail. On that first afternoon, I showed up just a little late. It's a long drive from Wyoming. But Greg and I went and checked some trail cameras. Man, big bucks were showing up on all his cameras. The next morning, it was sunshine and a south wind. That meant we could hit a property where a mega buck had been spotted. I got up in the stand in the dark, situated myself, and waited quietly. Finally, about mid-morning, everything started to break loose. I could hear the splash, splash, splash of a deer crossing a creek behind me. Then, ch -ch 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 -ch, oak leaves crunching. You knew a deer was about to show up. I looked over to a rub and he went right by that rub and ghosted in front of me. It was a nice buck, a nice four by four. That buck came in perfectly, just as Greg had set up that stand. Right below me, 15 yards, then 12 yards, then nine yards, a chip shot. Some other does come out into the field as this buck filtered off rutting, and then another young buck. The morning ended with no big buck sightings, but I definitely knew I was in Kansas and back in the game, the whitetail game. Now the rut, that's a totally different animal. Bucks are very aggressive during the rut. You can catch them during the day chasing does just about any time of day. And that's what's so exciting about hunting the rut. It's a much more aggressive form of hunting and you can be a lot more aggressive in your tactics. Uh, calling, rattling, decoys, mock scrapes, these all come into play during the rut. I had to come up with a plan and Greg and I, for the next morning's hunt, scratched our heads and he said, why don't you go where you shot your buck last year? And I said, why don't I go where I shot my buck last year? The reason that's a good stand, even though the deer can come from the west type direction, is the fact that this stand sits so high and most of the time it funnels your scent right over the top of those deer. They never know you're up in there. That stand was golden that morning. There were deer everywhere. Right away at sunrise, deer were filtering right in front of us. There was chasing going on behind us. And last year I chopped open several different shooting lanes right under the stand because the deer were showing up there. And guess what they did that morning? Right there under me. A buck, a nice buck, but again, a young buck. We watched these deer, all of them running in front of me, out past me. The show was great, but no big shooter showed up that morning. But I had this thought in the back of my mind. With all of these deer in here, and it was playing out just the same as last year, you know just as well as I do, a big buck was bound to show up. The rut was on, and it was just a matter of time before I had my chance to flub it up or be a hero. Coming up next, will that big shooter buck finally present itself to Mark? Stay tuned. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Matthews. Dang that east wind! It was back again! <sighs> so you know what that meant. I was going back to my favorite honey hole. That high, high, high stand way back on a creek bottom. It was a dry creek bottom with wetlands surrounding it and then steep hardwoods up to the side. The deer loved it because it was kind of a connecting point between good bedding cover and some of Greg's best food plots. One of the reasons Mark likes to hunt that stand, he's had great success there in the last four or five years. He's harvested a deer uh, two of the last three years he's hunted here out of that stand. So. He's taken with that place and that's where he always wants to set and it's always produced. Just a lot of activity in there. You're really in a secluded, heavy, heavy timbered area with a lot of grass and they just, they're pushing does in and out of there all day long during the rut. So that's one of uh, Mark's favorite places to hunt when he's out here. Right away in the morning, we had rutting activity.
the Young Bucks had taken over the place. These guys were ambitious and they were chasing every doe that they could find back and forth. It was hard sometimes just to keep track of all these young bucks running these does, but it was definitely entertaining and you had to be on your toes because you just never knew when a big buck would come charging down out of the hardwoods. The rut is really that big dance for white-tailed deer. As does come into estrus, bucks' testosterone levels go through the roof and you can catch them out bird, dog, and does any time of day and that's what makes hunting the rut so exciting. You can be more aggressive in your tactics and you can take the hunt to the deer because these bucks are running crazy. It's that one time during the year that they're the most vulnerable. About nine o'clock in the morning, I could hear something and I turned around and out of the corner of a little thicket came a big brawny deer. I checked it with my binocular. It was a mature deer. It looked like he was a seven by seven buck. He gave me one split second to possibly get off a shot, but with all the brush, the hard quartering away and him moving at a rapid pace, I nixed that. He went out beyond the stand, too far to shoot, but made a big circle. And that circle would probably, because I've seen these deer do it time and time again, lead back right to where I was. Now about an hour later, the prophecy came true. I heard more, shh, 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 shh. Looked up the road and that same buck, the seven by seven, was coming down the road. Unfortunately, it was too high for me to get a shot through too much timber and too far, but he was definitely making this his core rutting area for the day. It really was a good morning. Young bucks all over. We finally had a shooter in sight and I felt good that this buck would eventually show up right under my tree stand. These big bucks were overtaking this area. They were pushing out the smaller bucks. One of them had to show up the next morning, didn't it? And one of my main management practices around here is uh, trying to let the deer grow to maturity. You know, if you're wanting to shoot a 190 inch deer, you gotta let them fully grow up. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of mature deer running around. You know, if you if you need meat, uh, there's plenty of does to shoot, and I suggest that you know take a few of those out if you just want to feed fill your locker. But if you want to shoot big deer, you really you really got to let them grow to maturity, or you, you really never know what you have and what your potential is. It's early. I like to get to my stands at least a half an hour before shooting light. Looks like good morning. A little bit of drizzle. Cloudy, hazy, mid-November. What buck wouldn't want to rut this morning? I'm not really feeling like rutting, but I am feeling like hunting, and that's what we're gonna do right now. Can't forget my bow. Gotta have the Matthews. And we are off to the races. Or at least to the tree stand. I packed my rain gear, my heavy clothes to stay warm, headed out in the dark. I definitely wanted to stay warm because what I found over the years during the rut is a light drizzle will not put deer down. In fact, I always feel like it ramps up the rut a little bit. They are on the move more when that humidity level rises. I got in my stand well before daylight. I noticed movement off to my right. And there, coming down the trail, big buck. I took a glance at him didn't even have to look at him with my binocular. I knew he was big, brawny, mature, an old timer, and he was gonna pass right in front of my tree stand. Things were happening perfect. The buck continued on, and he marched right through a shooting lane. the feeling of watching a big monster buck hit the ground right in front of you. It's hard to describe, but you know what it is. Adrenaline rush, happiness. I mean, you're just on top of the world. I texted Greg and all he said was, I'm on my way. Well, when Mark sent me the text that he had one down, of course I was excited. I always liked it when he gets a deer. So I hurried on over there from my stand and uh, as I rolled up on it, 
It was a heavy deer. Just beautiful main beams, real heavy. Mark was all excited. I was excited. It's just always a great time when somebody has success. As I picked his antlers up, an OMG. The mass on this buck was off the charts big. Hands down, he was the most massive buck I've ever shot. One of my best bucks ever, and especially my best buck ever in Kansas. It's hard to top a hunt like that, but for me, shooting a buck like that, an old, ancient buck, that made my Kansas hunt as memorable as any that I'll have. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Analogix. Protect your herd with the power of science. Thompson Center, America's master gun makers. Sever Broadheads, straight through it. Hunter Safety System, stay connected. And by Cuddyback, more deer, fewer blanks. A new company is about to rewrite how broadheads are made and sold in America. It is not only that impressive, it's also that deadly. The Sever Titanium 2.1 is a premium rear deploy broadhead with exclusive features, including patented lock and pivot blades that allow the blades to stay open throughout flight and then pivot when they come in contact with their target, resulting in drastic penetration. I think we found the cause of death here. Yep, there it is. Sever's stretch cut blade effect stretches the hide while cutting for a larger than blade Got wound him. diameter. This means bigger blood trails and easier recovery. Look at that shot. The entry and exit wounds are simply devastating. An even more impressive feature is the self-contained blade design. The sharpened blades sit inside the ferrule before flight and also have the option of a practice lock which allows the shooter to shoot the broadhead into targets without doling or wrecking the blades. This is accomplished by inserting a small set screw into the ferrule. It's an ingenious design that allows you to verify true point of impact for maximum confidence. Sever broadheads are sold consumer direct in custom quantities from one to whatever you need. All at the same per unit price, $13.99. For more information, go to severbroadheads.com. That's pretty good impact. That's what it looks like. That's what did all the damage. You know, I love to use my Thompson Center muzzle loaders during gun season and also especially during muzzle loader season. But a couple things that I want to be sure after the season is over or before the next season starts is that my guns are clean, clear, and dry. This is the key to any muzzle loader and it's simple. It just takes a few easy steps. Okay, so first off, clean. You want to make sure this thing is clean when you put it away because that is a scourge of any muzzle loader. If you get water or any kind of condensation, just a little bit of moisture, it's going to rust things, it's going to corrode things, it's going to make it really hard for this thing to shoot accurately for year after year after year. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crack it open and I'm going to remove the breech plug. The breech plug is the furnace. It needs to be clear of any kind of corrosion and especially it needs to be dry. And after it's all dry, we're going to put a bit, little bit of lube on there that's going to keep it nice and seasoned until the next time we use it. So the nice thing about the strike, it's got this really easy to remove breech plug cover and then the breech plug just pops right out of there. No tools needed. So we can get the breech plug out of there, we can take a look at it and see how it's working. So you want to know the secret to keep that breech plug that I can see light through it and that's the key to a breech plug. You've got to be able to see light through it because that's where the fire is going to go. It's a little pick. These, these things are awesome. It's a little pick that I keep in my box here. And basically it allows me to get in there and remove anything that might be plugging that airway, but it's, it's perfect. This breech plug's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside and now I'm just gonna check the bore of my gun to be sure. 
The bore of my gun is really clean. Now I could run another patch through here or two, or I could you know, try to scrub it out if there's anything in there. You can take a little light, shine it in there to see if there's anything in here. I know this is clean, we don't have to work on it anymore. So this, we just basically have to put back together. I'm gonna take the breech plug, I'm putting it back into the bore, seating it nice and firmly, and then be doubly sure I'm going to wipe out the breech plug cover and I'm going to reapply a little bit. Uh, well, they, they, they call it Gorilla Grease. There's all sorts of different things. There's seasoning patches you can use, but I'm just going to take a little dab. It's just going to keep this thing from seizing up after we shoot it a couple times and it gets a little bit of that, that blowback from the Pirate X. Okay, so we're all set with that. We open the gun back up. We seat this back on there. So one last thing I'll do before closing that up is I'm just going to get a little bit of gun oil and I'm going to put it on the working mechanisms. Get that down in there. Just get that nice and, and lubed. I don't want to get it into the breech plug hole. We don't want oil in there. We want to keep that nice and dry. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to oil down my gun like I would any other firearm. A nice light coating, get it nice and dry, put it away, and we'll be all set for when deer season comes. Thank <laughs> you.